It's a victory service this morning, and the Lord is granting you victory on every side. And the good thing about us is that as believers, we are fighting a battle that has been won already. We have the victory already. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 3, Jesus said, be of good cheer. Saying this is what you have tribulation. I said, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, so you have an understanding that you are ahead of your adversaries. You are ahead of your peers. You know, Smith Wigginson said something. He said, I am a thousand times more in the inside than I am on the outside. So whatever you see outside is just a shadow. The real me is inside because I carry Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. Well, you want to put your hands together for yourself for making it to church this morning. Hallelujah. And now I want you to help me appreciate this amazing, amazing youth choir. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. They know how to hype themselves. So, so they are, they are already doing it for themselves. So you don't need to do it for them. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, this morning, quickly, of course, we are still talking about praise. It's a month of praise, and we will continue to praise God. And I hope we are doing that in our various homes. We are praising God, I mean, at your own convenience, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, or whichever way works for you. But make sure that you are praising God. Suspend your request for now. Just praise him. Let him know that you can also praise him. That it's not only about give me, give me, give me. You know, there's a level of relationship that God... What do you, what would you have me do? That is maturity. It's not about God. Give me bread. Give me butter. Give me sweet. Give me, no, no. There's a level of God. What would you have me do? And that is where God is bringing us. And by the way, while you are doing that, I want to encourage you, whatever it is that is a concern for you, you can put it there. If you have a point of contact, put it at the center, maybe a document or something that, you know, talks about the particular thing you want God to do. Dance around it. God knows that you have that need. Just dance around it. That God, even though this problem is here, but I'm still dancing. And as you are dancing, you are confusing the enemy. It's about, is it not the same person that is having a problem? Why is he dancing? Then you will go away. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, this morning I'm going to share with us, it will end in praise. Hallelujah. Help me tell your neighbor, announce to your neighbor, it will end in praise. If that person is not responding well, talk to the other person. It will end in praise. Now, have you heard the breaking news that this my situation is going to end in praise? That is the breaking news. It will end in praise in Jesus' name. Now, John chapter 9, John chapter 9, verse 1 to 10. Quickly, John chapter 9, verse 1 to 10. How many of us were blessed by last week's message? I, you know, I wasn't, I came in, I, I went to one of the parishes under our zone. So I came in just at the end of the message where altar call was being made. And of course, usually I want to listen to whatever it is that happened. So I listened to the message partly on that Sunday and the concluding part on, I mean, on Monday. And I mean, it was wow. It was wow. I mean, God bless you, sir. Amen. The Lord will replenish you in Jesus' name. And in case you didn't hear it or you are here, you are somewhere else, go back and listen to it. Thank God we are not even using CDs again. It's free on YouTube. So... And just go and listen to that message again. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 10. John 9, 1 to 10. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When, the, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and, and made clay with the saliva and he anointed the eyes of the blind man and with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated saint. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that, that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Verse 10. Verse 10, media. Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes 
open. Somebody is going to ask you, how did you break through? Somebody is going to ask you, how did you relocate? Somebody is going to ask you, how did you change your address? Somebody is going to ask you, how did you get that job? In the mighty name of Jesus. Now people see issues, you know, they give different interpretations to different issues of life. Now, when you look at that text that we read, it's a reflection of what concerns of people have. Now, we have about five major characters in that text. We have the disciples, we have the Pharisees, we have the man, we have Jesus himself, and we have the neighbors. Now, for the, for the, for the disciples, their concern was that who sinned? That somebody must have sinned for this guy to be in this kind of situation. So maybe you are here this morning, some people have been judging you. They say, well, you are passing through this situation because of, you, must, you must have done something wrong. I mean, they said the same thing to Job. His friends told him, you must have offended God. That is why you are passing through this situation. It is because certain things happened. No. You are not in a position to judge anyone. I mean, the, the disciples are supposed to be the people in the church. They are supposed to be workers. They are supposed to be members, committed members in the church. And they are the ones that were actually asking that question. That who, somebody must have seen. It's either this man or his parents. So in case you have been judged, this morning God is saying to you that he has your back. Hallelujah. Now, for the, for the neighbors. Now, that does not mean that you have the liberty to misbehave. Now, because that is what we see today. When you try to correct somebody, the next thing is you are judging me. No. There's a, a whole wall of difference between judgment, judging somebody and correcting somebody. Of course, as a pastor, if you misbehave around me, I will tell you that what you have done is not right. I mean, that does not mean that I'm judging you. Amen. So, I mean, people don't want to be corrected again. We need to strike a balance there. Now, we also have the neighbors. Their own concern was about this man's testimony. Is the one. Is not the one. No, 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 no. He can't be. I know him very well. Last week, he still came to meet me that he, has not, he was not able to pay his, um, the, the, I mean, his best pays money. I still give him, no, no, he can't be the one in that apartment. No, 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 no. I know him very well. No, for the Pharisees, their concern was that this man that healed you is a sinner. And in any case, excuse me, why did you have to be healed on a, on a Sabbath day? If that man knows scripture, he will know that on a Sabbath day, you don't do good. Because that is the meaning. You don't heal someone that is sick. And for the man, his own concern was that, well, whatever it is that is your problem, that is your own problem. Once I was blind, but now I can see. It's all about my testimony. So you are going to have a testimony this month in the name of Jesus. And for Jesus, his concern was to heal the man. That was his own concern. Because he told them said that the work of God may be revealed in him. So that is why I know that the situation that we are passing through at the moment is just for the work of God to be revealed. Not for any other thing. Not for the devil to be glorified. But it's for the work of God to be revealed. God, they know. They thought they buried you. They didn't know that they planted you so that you would germinate. God has an agenda for you. God has a plan for you. So, there are so many examples in scriptures to show that God is actually rooting for us as believers. So it's not about what you are passing through. It's not about the situation that you find yourself at the moment. It's about the ultimate plan of God. And that is why he has given us that word this morning that it will end in praise. It does not matter what you are going through. Now, what did Jesus say concerning Lazarus? In John chapter 11 verse 4. John 11 verse 4. The Bible says, when Jesus heard that, he, when he heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, somebody, he got a message that this person is sick, your friend. I mean, that was what they said, the, your friend, Lazarus, the one that you love, is sick. And the only thing he could say was that this sickness is not unto death. I mean, in the under normal condition, he's supposed to take the next available flight and, you know, jet down to the place and make sure he lays hand upon the man and get him healed and, I mean, he can go and face some other things. But he said, no, that that sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. So, my friend is in pain. My friend is sick. My friend is on a sick bed, not because God wants to punish him, but because God wants to glorify himself in his life. So your job hasn't come, not because God wants you to suffer. It is just because God wants to glorify himself in your life. So that when the job is going to land, you are going to land it big. Hallelujah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, the Bible says, Do not be afraid, nor dismayed. 
say, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So, as a child of God, it's a victory service. We, we, like we said earlier, we are fighting a battle that has been won. So, as a child of God, you need to see the end from the beginning. Because that is the way your father sees. That is the way your father sees. And when you, are, when you see such, you are at peace. You, your mind is at rest. When they were going to commission Disney World, now the, the governor came to, to commission the place and he said he, he, I mean, he said he wished Disney was alive. Of course, he was, he was dead by the time they were going to commission it. He said he wished he was alive to see this great day. And the wife said to him, no, he saw it before today. So you are the one that is just seeing this. But God, I mean, my husband saw it before he passed on. So in other words, whatever you have seen is no longer news to you. Because you know the one that you are dealing with. You know that this thing will certainly end in praise. It's just a matter of time. Please tell your neighbor, you are a project in the hand of God. And God cannot fail. Because God cannot fail, you cannot fail. And because God don't have abandoned projects, you can never be abandoned. Amen. So, why will it end in praise? Quickly, let's look at some points here. Then we will take some time to praise God again this morning. Hallelujah. Now, number one is that it is for the glory of God. The number one reason why it will end in praise is because that situation is for the glory of God. That scripture that we read, um, Roman, I mean, John chapter 9, verse 3, I love the way the Passion Translation put it. He said, just answer. Jesus answered. You know, when they asked him, Neither, I mean, he said, is this man or the parent? He said, the Bible says, Jesus answered, neither. In other words, not the father, not the parents, not the man. He said, it happened to him so that you could watch him experience God's miracle. Can you imagine that? That, that didn't happen to him so that you, all of you here, you can watch this man experience God's miracle. So that means this thing is going to happen, I mean, it's happening to this man so that you guys can be a spectator. You can cheer him up when the miracle is happening. So, those people that are watching you, those people that are pitying you, those people that are condemning you, those people that are judging you, that thing is happening so that they can watch you experience God's miracle. So, now, Jesus knew that the bread was not enough. And the bread that finished in John chapter 6 was for the glory of God. In John chapter 6 verse 6, the Bible says he himself knew what he was going to do. So, concerning your situation, Jesus knows what to, he knows what to do. He's aware. So, nothing happens to him by chance. No. He's never caught on aware. No. He knows what to do. He asked Philip. So, the, the Philip said, even if you have 200 denarii worth of, I mean, worth of bread, it can't go around. We don't even have the money. And even if we have the money, we don't even have a, we don't have a bakery around there. there. There is no grocery store, a store around there that we can purchase this volume from. I mean, he didn't know that the bread of life was with him. So, it's not about bakery. So, that is why when God is talking to us, we shouldn't think, we shouldn't try to rationalize. No. Like I tell people, if you want to think about God, the fuse in your head will blow. Because it's so deep that you can't find him. So, it's not about the, the I mean, in his mind, as far as Philip was concerned, um, do we have any Lulu around there? Is there any care for around there? If God is going to bribe, give us bread, and we didn't even have that quantity, no, 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 no. The next available grocery store is not, I mean, in his mind, that was what he was thinking. That was what he was thinking. And that is the way we also think as believers sometimes. So if God has said, I'm going to do this, then the next thing is, how is he going to do it? But the how belongs to God. Why would you give yourself a take over what is not your business, not your, not your transaction? So he knew what to do because he created all things for his own pleasure. The Bible says without him, I mean, he said with him, there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. So no confusion around, around God. No. God is never confused. And the question is, why does God perform miracles anyway? Why does he perform miracles? It's for his own praise. Miracles are for his own praise. He does it so that at the end of the day, they can give praise to him. In Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, verse 17. Now, the woman that was sick, she was sick for about 18 years. She was bent over. And when Jesus healed her, now, the same thing that happened to that man, happened to him. The Pharisees were angry that this man had to heal another woman on the Sabbath day. And the, now, they have known this woman. She was a member of their church. Now, you can see religious, religious people. 
You know, they, they, this woman is a member of their church in, a, in their congregation. They knew her too well that this man is bent over or was bent over. Now, she suddenly got her healing. The excitement of seeing somebody that had been walking, you know, the other way and stand, standing up upright. I mean, that was not enough excitement for them. The only thing they could say, how could you be healed on a Sabbath day? We want to know. And what did the Bible say here? He said, and when he, had, when he had said these things, because Jesus asked them, that if you have any animal that, you know, that falls into a ditch, you will not take him. How much more? This daughter of, I mean, of Abraham. He said, and when he said this, these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. So God will always perform miracles for his own praise. And so that your adversaries can be put to shame. By reason of what God is going to do as you praise God this month, every of your adversaries they will be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, he loves to do new things. We are talking about why it will end in praise. You need to follow me closely. He loves to do new things. God loves to do new things. And as a matter of fact, he loves to do the unimaginable. Not ordinary new things. God wants to make news at every point in time. He wants to do the unimaginable. In, in verse 32 of that scripture that we read, John chapter 9, verse 32, the Bible says, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. So, until this period, because there were no socket. I mean, everything was just blank. Everything was just blank. So, and he said, well, we've not heard this before. So he made, he wanted to make news. And, and that is why we are talking about that man till today. If he was born like a normal human being, if he had his eyes, he would have come and gone. And nobody, I mean, a lot of people were born in that time that they, they had their eyes and everything was okay with them. And nobody talks about them. But because of this, man, this man's experience, we are still talking about him today. Because God made, a new, I mean, made news out of his life, out of his situation. So, God loves to do new things. And because that is why your testimony is going to be loud. They are saying, no, oh, in this family, it doesn't happen that way. But because you have, you have come, you have come to make news in that family. And it will happen in your own time, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, from verse 18 to 19, God, I mean, the Bible is speaking there about the, the journey of the children. He said, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Perizzite, and the, Ita and, and the Hivite, and Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then will eat your voice, and you shall come, and the, the elders of Israel, and to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, the Lord God of Hebrews has met with us. Now, please, let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Now, there's a scripture that I'm trying to read here. The Bible says that God took them, he didn't take them through the route, the normal route, so that they would not change their mind. You understand? He took them through that particular place, through the, through the, side, the, the side of the Red Sea, so that, I mean, it was very easy for God to take them through another route, they would get to the, to the promised land so easily. But he said no, so that these people would not change their mind, and also to prove to them that I can make a way in the middle of the sea. So, if God has brought you to that place, if God has brought you to that level, not because God cannot solve your problem. No. Not because God does not know the alternative. No. Not because God does not have a better option. No. That is the best option. God's option is always the best. So that at the end of the day, the world will know that this God is a mighty God. Now, you need to understand something that he did here. As far as the children of Israel were concerned, this God brought us here. So that, I mean, because some of them were even like, I mean, is it that they don't want our carcass to be seen? They don't want us to be buried normally? I mean, you are, you are still alive. You are talking about the, the place of your burial ground. I mean, the place where you'll be buried. And that was their concern. But what did God do? God used one problem. They had two problems. He actually used one to solve another problem. Then the other one, he made, it, I mean, he made a name for himself. Now, what was the problem? The Red Sea was ahead of them. Now, the host of Pharaoh was behind them. Now, what did he do? He used the Red Sea to swallow the host of Pharaoh. And they went on the, high, I mean, on the dry land. The same God. So, when you look at situations around and it looks like there is no way out, you don't need to look for the way out because Jesus himself is the way. 
And because he's with you, even if there's no way, you already have the way with you. So wherever he turns is the way. That's the meaning. Wherever he turns to, that is the way. So God always wants to do new things. And one thing you also need to understand is that God is more interested in your development than your comfort. How? Your development would, I mean, at the end of the day, your development will bring more comfort to you. Because if God is bringing you up, is, is, I mean, is pruning you, is shaping you to become a particular image, that is development. You are no longer where you used to be. You are at a particular level. And at the end of the day, when you look at yourself, you discover that you are a better version of you. And because you are a better version of you, you have more capacity. So you can even do much more than you, you yourself can imagine. So that is why God will always is more concerned about you becoming a better version of yourself than the temporary, I mean, com- I mean comfort that you are thinking about. So, and that is why the Bible says, in all things, he works for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So, when you pass through a particular situation, you pass through a particular phase, at the end of it, what you should ask yourself is, what is the learning curve here? What did I actually learn from this? God, what are you trying to pass across? It's not about, oh, this thing was painful. Yes. When you are bringing out a masterpiece, there's a bit of chiseling, there's a bit of sandpapering, there's a bit of, I mean, a, a lot of work. But it shouldn't be about, ah, this thing is painful. The question is, God, what exactly are you saying to me? And that is what makes you a better version of you. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. He wants to make a celebrity out of you. Now, what happened here? They said, he's not, is he the one? No, he's the one. He's not the one. Now, this is somebody that, I mean, he was looking up to them. Was, the Bible says they will, they will put him there. He said, is he not the one that stays there and begged? So we know this man as a beggar. We know him as a beggar. I mean, anytime he greets you, the next thing he wants to say is that um, there is no food in the house. Oh, the next thing he wants to say is that uh, uh, my children have not paid their, I mean, I've not paid my children's school fees. There's always one thing or the other to ask for. You know, that is the story around him. But in this particular situation, he said, no, he's the one. No, he's not the one. So God wants to make a celebrity out of you. Now, his neighbors were saying, he's the one, he's not the one. He said to them, don't fight. No, you guys do. You don't need to fight yourselves. I am the one. You know, the Pharisees, they had a, they had a headache. He said, well, do you also want to be his disciple or do you also have problems so that I can lay his hand on you? He said, no, 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 it's you and your family that he will lay his hand upon, not, not us. No, we believe Moses. This man, we don't believe him. This man is evil. So for them, he said to them, well, that is your own headache. And in the newspapers, he made the headlines. A man that was once blind now can see. A man that had no eyes before now suddenly have eyes. And you know, when, you know the way the people fight on celebrities. You know the way they do it. Have you seen people quarrel about Messi and Ronaldo before? If you see the way they argue, you think that after the argument, they will say, okay, you that you won the argument. Now, 10% of Messi's um, income comes to you. Or you they say, no, no, if you, um, if you know what is happening now, um, Davido is better than um, Whiskey. You, okay, you know. Praise the name of the Lord. They will tell you, this one is the one that is better. This one is, I mean, the one, one guy, one day, they were, I saw something on social media, they were arguing on Messi and Ronaldo. And at the end of the day, the guy, one was for Messi, one was for Ronaldo. The one that was for Messi, he didn't have food. So after the argument, the one for Ronaldo is the one that was still feeding. So he came back and he knocked, said, oh, Alpha, and I said, Alpha what? Go and meet your mercy, he will give you food. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's that bad. So when you see, when you see celebrities, they argue over them. So when they begin to argue over you, just know, don't, you don't need to feel bad. It is because you are now a celebrity. Put your hands together for yourself. And you know something? You know that actors don't die. So that means you can't die in that situation. You are the main actor. You can't die. No, no, no. It's not possible. It's not possible. Or else the film has ended. So God is working out something concerning your matter. Just know it. If, if there's anything you are taking on today, know that in this matter, God is with you. And because God cannot fail, you can never fail. Number four. Always beyond expectations. Every time God wants to exceed expectations, and that is why it will end in praise. Because if it is normal, it will be like maybe some people can even come around and take the glory. 
But there are certain things that will happen. And people will know that this is God. I mean, the Bible tells us in Psalm 126, verse 1, that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Said so even the hidden, the unbelievers, they know that their God has done something for them. I mean, have you not heard people talk, talk to you that, come and tell you that, please hold on to your God, though, that your God that you are serving. Hold on to him. Oh. Why? The, number one, they know that you serve God, and they know that you serve the true God. So that is, some people will come in a very subtle way. Some people will do it in different ways. But at least for the one that will come out and tell you, that is to show you that they know that you serve a living God. So, why? Because God will always perform beyond the expectation. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 25, the Bible says, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry, carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Now, these were the same set of people that were panicky some few days back. The concern was that three, king, I mean, three kings were coming against Jehoshaphat. And if you asked him at all, anything, the only thing he wanted was safety, security. I mean, in fact, maybe his prayer point was that God, change the mind of this, this world. Let them not fight me again. Not even that I should win this battle. I would prefer not to fight. Because in my own capacity, I know I cannot win them. But now God allowed him. He allowed them to come. Don't forget, the Bible says, you will not lift a finger in this matter. God allowed them to come. And at the end of the day, even though they came, they couldn't do anything. They couldn't do any harm. The Bible says they helped to destroy one another because God was going to surpass their expectations. And for three days, they were guarding spoils without fighting a battle. And the question you want to ask yourself is, these people were coming to war. Why did they have to come with their juries and come with their valuables? Why couldn't they keep them at home? Why? Because God was going to surpass somebody's expectation. So, the one that is on your matter, the Lord is going to make you a judge over that person in the mighty name of Jesus. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 6 to 8. You know, the Bible says, you can read that when you get home. That the Bible says that the, the Lord made those people to hear the sound. They heard the noise. And they advised themselves. They said to themselves that they, these people, they have come, gone to hire the Syrians. I mean, they have gone to hire an, another army. And because of that, the only thing we can do is to run and abandon our ways. So, when God is doing certain things, he knows what to do. I mean, and you know what God did. You know the Bible says he used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And now he used people that were inconsequential. The one that you will not reckon with. Lepers. And he made only four lepers. Only four lepers. You know, to sound like a mighty troop. Such that as they were stamping their feet, it was like as if a machine gun was just coming. I mean, what do you call this, this equipment, this moving equipment? For what? So they heard it and they said, ah, no, 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 no. We can't fight these guys. No, no, no. This one is more than us. So, and they took to their heels and they abandoned everything. Why? Because God must be praised at the end of the day. Because the name of God must be glorified. Because that particular situation must end in praise. Hallelujah. So, the people that didn't have enough, they had more than enough. Elisha said to them, by this time tomorrow. So, God is the God of 24 hours. He said, by this time of tomorrow, this thing is going to happen. And the one that went to Harvard said to the king, said, no, 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 it's not possible. If only you understand channels of distribution, you will know that these things, they need to arrive at our port. We need to clear them. We need to take two, three days for municipality to come and um, customs to come. And after clearing, we need to sign some papers. Then you need to think about the chains of distribution. How do we connect all the nation? I mean, all the cities in this country? No, 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 no. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be possible. No, no, no. And the man of God said, to you, you are going to see it with your eyes, but you will not taste of it. So when God says something, he said, even if God is going to open the windows of heaven, and God didn't, now, if God opened the windows of heaven, you know there will be more than enough. But God didn't have to open the windows of heaven. So don't think yourself out of God's plan. No. Don't reason yourself out of God's agenda. 
or else you'll be doing yourself a lot of harm. Then lastly, it creates a platform for witnessing. And the truth is, your testimony is the good news. Your testimony is the good news for others to come. Because when they hear what God has done concerning you, it becomes easier for you to evangelize. In fact, some of them will come and surrender to you. When God, when you see certain things in your life, some of your family members will say, well, we want to serve that your God. Because they know you, they know everything about you. And they know that you have not done anything, I mean, you didn't bring anything from anywhere. I mean, you know that is the cheapest form of evangelism. And it's like, we know you now. We know everything about you. And the only thing you can say, well, it is God. It is God. Okay, it is God. Give us that God. We want to experience that God. And you give them that God. Because the truth is your testimony is as potent as the blood, in case you don't know. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says, we overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So, the, the same thing the blood will do, your testimony will do. Hallelujah. And you see, whatever God has done before, it can be done again. He can do it again. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if there's anything that you have seen in scriptures, if there's any testimony that you have heard, God can still do it again because he's not a respecter of persons. Whatever he has done in the life of A, he can also do in the life of B. So your testimony is very key because God is interested in it. In John chapter 12, John chapter 12, verse 11, 10 to 11, John 12, 10 to 11, the Bible said, but the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also. Why? Because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. They saw what happened. So, he didn't have to do any crusade. They saw it for themselves. They said, well, we believe. And if you have ever seen any the group of people that is very difficult to convince, the Jews. Because even when they see, they will still say, no, it's not, it, we are not seeing well. So, and they saw. And on the account of that, they believed. So they know, they saw the testimony. And why? Because God did it. Don't forget what Jesus said to them. He said, it is for the glory of God. Now, at the end of the day, is it not for the glory of God or not? Because on the account of that singular act, many people went home and believed. And it was so bad, it was so bad that the chief priest wanted to kill Lazarus. And you know the funny thing? Even if he succeeded in killing Lazarus, I mean, he had been resurrected, he had been resurrected. He can't wipe whatever it is that he saw from their memory, from what they saw from their memory. So they will say, oh, now we know that you are an evil man. You are the one that killed him. So they will even believe them all. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, in John chapter 4, verse 39, John 4, 39, as I round, as I round off, the Bible says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. You remember that woman that Jesus saw by the well? She went into the city and said, well, I've seen someone that told me everything about my life. And they came, those people came, and the Bible said they, all, they believed because of the word of the woman. And that was the first phase. Later on, he said certain things to them, which further established them. But at the first instance, they believed because of what they heard from that woman. He told me all that I ever did. He told me everything. So you, that's why you don't keep quiet. God is taking you through so that at the end of the day, when you come out of that thing, it is to tell your story. It is to give glory back to God. It is to establish that your, your testimony. And you know another interesting thing about this thing that we are, this praising God that we're talking about, you know, I mean, that this thing will end in praise, a bit of digression. In Matthew chapter 15, because whatever you do, whatever you do does not end with you. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, you discover that this woman prayed a prayer here. He said, and behold, a woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed. This woman, paid, she prayed that God have mercy. Now, when you go to Mark chapter 10, verse 46, the same prayer that uh, Bartimaeus prayed, I think that should be verse 45. Let's read from verse 45. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, that woman prayed that prayer. Jesus, I mean, um, Bartimaeus prayed, that, prayed the same prayer. Now, you want to ask yourself, why didn't Jesus answer this woman? 
and he answered, it was because of this woman that gave way for Bartimaeus. Because this woman's own happened before. So what she did, and the Bible says she worshipped God. After worshipping God, Jesus responded to him. Now, when it was the turn of this woman, it was established already that Jesus will answer this kind of prayer. So when you praise God, that is why it is important what you do also affects others. So when you praise God, what you are doing has a way of affecting other people. When Paul and Silas were praying in the prison, the Bible says the prisoners heard them. When the prison door was going to open, did he open for only Paul and Silas? No, all the doors were open. So what you do affects others. So what you do in that family affects other members of your family. So don't be surprised that as we are praising God in Dubai, we are hearing good news concerning your family members at home. Why? Because God is everywhere. And as long as you know how to praise him, then you know how to draw from him. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet. Everything will end in praise. All eyes closed, all eyes bowed. I want to give opportunity to some people this morning because the number one thing to do is to give your life to Jesus. For your heart, that is the number one thing he wants from you before your praise. And in any case, if your heart is not right, your praise will not be acceptable. Cain and Abel went before the law. They, are, they were brothers. But the Bible said the Lord had respect for the offering of Abel. Because why? The heart of Abel was right. Even though Cain also brought offerings, but God didn't accept it. So you are here this morning. He says that the sacrifice of a sinner is an abomination to him. As we continue praising God, it's important for you to align with your maker. And the Bible says something that there's rejoicing in heaven over every soul that repents. So that means you can even cause rejoicing in heaven. And when you cause rejoicing in heaven, what do you think happens in your own life? That means you have sown the seed of rejoicing then you always have reasons to rejoice. So this morning, I want to give opportunity to as many that are yet to give their life to Jesus. You want to surrender your life to Jesus, I'd like to pray for you. Why not just put your left hand on your chest? That is where your heart is. Put your left hand on your chest and you lift your right hand to heaven. And maybe you are there. You, give, you have given your life to Jesus before and you went astray. God is calling you home this morning. He's saying, come back home just like the prodigal son did and is willing to throw a party on your behalf. So I'd like to pray for you also. Put your left hand on your chest also. Lift your right hand to heaven. Now maybe you are there. You have a particular habit in your life that you want God to destroy. I mean, there's no better time. You are before him now. He's willing to do everything for you if only you will yield to him. If you only you will surrender to him. Put your left hand on your chest also and lift your right hand to heaven. If you are doing that, can I see your hand up quickly? Anyone? Anyone? There's nothing to be ashamed of. Anybody like that? Anybody? So it is assumed that we are all born again. All right, let's just talk to God and say, Father. I will not fall from grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your grace preserve me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your grace preserve me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your grace preserve me, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your grace preserve me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your grace preserve me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your grace preserve me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, I will not fail. I will not fall. Thank you, Jehovah. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God, congratulations, my sister. And in case you are there, you are struggling with your, within yourself, something is telling you you need to be out there, and something is telling you you don't answer them. Well, the one that is telling you the contrary, that is the spirit of the enemy. It's about you and your maker. It's about you settling it with him once and for all. God does not need any one of us. We are the ones that need him. My sister, the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. We appreciate you because you're a faithful God. No man comes except to draw. Thank you for drawing your, your daughter to yourself. Glory be to your name in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the hold of sin over uh, is broken today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every plan of the enemy is canceled in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, your lives take a turning point in the mighty name of Jesus. 
and people around you will know that of a truth you have encountered God in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Blessed be your name, O Lord, for in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you, my sister. Please go with, with her, with my sister here. She's going to share some things with you, and you come back and join us.